I Bowen and greetings from Sri Lanka. Today we are here at the New Zealand High Commission office in Colombo, Sri Lanka to speak to the very first High Commissioner from New Zealand to Sri Lanka, His Excellency Michael Appleton. I'm sure this is going to be a great conversation and a great opportunity for all of our Sri Lankan community in New Zealand to get to know the very first New Zealand High Commissioner to Sri Lanka. And more especially, this is a very special occasion and a great opportunity for the readers of the first Sri Lankan newspaper in New Zealand, Sri Lankans. Let's go in and meet His Excellency Michael Appleton. I Bowen and greetings from Sri Lanka. Today, we are here at the New Zealand High Commission in Colombo, Sri Lanka for a very special occasion as we get to know the very first High Commissioner to Sri Lanka from New Zealand. And we warmly welcome His Excellency Michael Appleton and we thank you very much for taking time from your busy schedule to have a chat with us. I think this is going to be a great opportunity for our Sri Lankan community in New Zealand to get to know more about their very first commissioner to Sri Lanka. So, uh, Mr. Michael Appleton, which part of New Zealand are you from? I am from Wellington, so I grew up. Uh, I grew up in uh, Karori, a suburb in Wellington. Uh, and in fact, when I am not serving New Zealand overseas, I still live in uh, the very same place, uh, just maybe a hundred meters away from where I grew up, okay. uh, in, in the suburb of Wellington. Right. And would you like to tell me a little bit about your settlement in, settlement in Sri Lanka so far? Have your how about your family? Has your family uh, come to Sri Lanka already? How are things going? Yeah, I came to, I've come to Sri Lanka with my wife, uh, Nayan, and my son, three-year-old son, Samraj. And we arrived here, we arrived here in June. So I guess, I don't know, it's been four or five months now. Um, uh, we've set in, in very well. Um, uh, Nayan is, in fact, from, uh, she's Indian, she's from India. That's where we met on my last posting. Uh, and so, in some ways, Sri Lanka feels much more like home to her home to than, uh, than New Zealand, including for reason, uh, simple reasons like the climate, it's much... Uh, uh, much uh, much warmer here than uh, than Wellington winters, um, so we, we've settled in well, and uh, we had. Um, I mean, it's been a somewhat unusual time to be arriving on a posting because uh, we started as everybody does with a few weeks of quarantine uh, in Nagombo, uh, close to Colombo here, and um, and then we had the period of lockdown. Um, uh, but uh, you know, thankfully, um, Sri Lanka is starting to. Uh, open up again and yeah. so traveling around the country has been possible and um, I've done a little bit of that over the last few weeks going down south and uh, out to the east nice. of the country so that has been great. Yeah. Okay, how, how, how did you find the traveling? Uh, I've really enjoyed it. I mean I always like to when I'm living in another country get out of the capital because the capital's yeah. uh, usually not that much like the rest <laughs> of the country. Um, so it was really nice to get down to um, uh, get down to the southern coast to Gaul and to Hambantota and then this week just gone uh, out uh, we went out east to, to Batty as well as uh, to Kandy um, and so I feel like I've been to a, a lot of different places yeah. <laughs> in the last few weeks and uh, met people of uh, different walks of life and uh, just have been it's been really good to be able to talk to them about their experiences of the last few years which have been obviously quite unusual given the, the COVID context. Yeah. You've travelled quite a lot in this short period of time, isn't it? Yeah, well, one of the, one of the great things about travelling around Sri Lanka is uh, everybody's very friendly, but also it's quite, a, you know, geographically, it's a relatively small country, so it's possible to get to lots of different places reasonably yeah. easily by car. Thank you so much for sharing all that with us, uh, Mr. Michael. And would you tell us a little bit about your background in diplomatic service, like how it started and how it progressed up to where it is right now? Yeah, so I've been a diplomat since 2005, so I guess that's 16 years now. Um, when I was growing up as a boy, I think the two professions that I talked about that I wanted to be was a journalist or a diplomat. And I think uh, my mother was fiercely in favor of the diplomacy route uh, um, because of certain views she may have had about uh, journalism, which I don't share. But um, uh, but yeah, so I, I, I started uh, as a diplomat soon after finishing my master's uh, degree. And, um, uh, and ever since then, I've been bouncing between New Zealand and the rest of the world. So. I've had overseas assignments in East Timor, 
um, in the United States. Uh, my last one was in India and now in, in Sri Lanka. Um, and this gives you a great opportunity to, and it's a great privilege to represent your country uh, to the world uh, and to live in lots of very different places. So, uh, you know, India is the largest country in the world and uh, Timor-Leste is a country of um, of fewer than a million people, it's very, uh, very different. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's, um, you know, that's a rich and diverse experience. But, you know, it, on every occasion, the objective is to, you know, build connections with, uh, between New Zealand and the, and the local community and try to um, make things uh, happen that um, are to the benefit of both countries. Okay. It's good to hear that you've been enjoying your service as a diplomat. So if I move on a little bit more into um, New Zealand and New Zealand's connection with Sri Lanka, I would like to ask you what makes New Zealand to set up the diplomatic mission in Sri Lanka now? We announced uh, that we would uh, open this post, um, uh, this High Commission five or so years ago, and um, there were a number of reasons, but I think what it boils down to is that we feel that um, there is more that could be happening between us, uh, between us, between New Zealand and uh, in Sri Lanka, um, and that it's only possible to sort of realise that potential by having an on-the-ground presence, an on-ground permanent presence. And so this is a big investment for us. New Zealand doesn't uh, open new high commissions every day because they um, they um, they are expensive um, uh, and they require a you know, long-term commitment to a country. Um, but we felt that it was time to make that commitment um, to Sri Lanka. Um, there are a lot of things that we want to do here. We want to, uh, we want to build the political and security relationship between our two countries um, so that, um, you know, we are learning from each other's experiences when it comes to the major security issues facing our countries. Um, we're wanting to diversify, build and diversify the economic relationship so that, you know, the group of New Zealand and Sri Lankan businesses that are doing, um, uh, doing business with one, one another um, is increasing. Um, there's been an economic activity between our countries for uh, decades and decades and decades and um, uh, it's been quite dominated by New Zealand sending dairy products to Sri Lanka and Sri Lanka sending tea to New Zealand and what we're wanting to do um, and I know the Sri Lankan government wants to do um, is diversify and, um, and build uh, that economic relationship so that's there as well I think there, there's another aspect which you know speaks to your publication and that's that there is a um, large and, um, and growing and thriving Sri Lankan community in New Zealand. Um, uh, it's gotten you know three or four times bigger since the turn of the century, and um, uh, we want to be a connection point uh, between um, these uh, Sri Lankan Kiwis in New Zealand um, uh, and Sri Lanka. I mean, obviously, all of um, the Sri Lankan Kiwis have families here as well, but. Um, given that our job is to is to connect these two societies, um, we are definitely a resource um, for them too. Well, we'll be looking forward to all these great initiatives. And in addition to that, what other services will be available to New Zealanders visiting Sri Lanka? One of the most important services that New Zealand um, embassies and high commissions around the world provide um, what we call consular services. So, you know, if a New Zealander um, you know, get, finds themselves in a difficult position, uh, when they um, uh, when they are here, um, and um, you know there are there are different ways of accessing that, but yeah. um, that's uh, I mean I think that's a significant part of it. And I suppose the other other thing I'd say on the sort of um, on the on the business side is, you know every every day I hear from a um, New Zealander of Sri Lankan descent who has business um, interests between these two countries and who's interested in you know connections or advice on that. So we are always. But I mean, I think in a general sense that we're always open to um, to talking with um, Sri Lankan Kiwis um, uh, um, if there's something that we can do to help. You know, many Sri Lankan Kiwis will um, have very strong family connections here and um, and won't have any need for a New Zealand government official like me. But um, if there is anything that we can do to help, but you know, we are here. Um, this is um, this is the High Commission of every New Zealand citizen. And moving on to the Colombo Plan, um, next I would like to talk about the historical relationship that New Zealand has had with Sri Lanka mm. through the Colombo Plan. I mean, I don't think there's much being talked about how that connection was made and how the, how New Zealand connected with Sri Lanka, especially through um, services like the dental school mm. and also 
offering scholarships to various Sri Lankans to study in New Zealand. So what I would like to ask you is what are your thoughts about the Colombo plan? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it is a fascinating history that, you know, from, virtually from the very beginning of Sri Lanka as an independent country, New Zealand has been uh, connected here through the Colombo plan and offering uh, technical assistance. And what I find very interesting, actually, is that many of the themes that were discussed there or the programs that were implemented are actually issues that we are still grappling with now. So you mentioned the, the, dental, um, the dental nurse training um, as an example. You know, we are still now um, involved in um, providing technical assistance to Sri Lanka um, in the area of training. Now, it's not dental nurses, it's, um, it's, it's veterinarians. Um, and it's more focused in the sort of in the dairy sphere. But I mean, if you look at New Zealand's programs through the Colombo Plan um, uh, with Sri Lanka, a lot of it was scholarships, um, and a lot of it was in the dairy sector about helping to, uh, you know, ex uh, transfer or share the expertise of the New Zealand dairy sector um, with um, Sri Lankan farmers. And those two things, <laughs> trying to help Sri Lankans. Uh, via scholarships or other mechanisms to, you know, benefit from the New Zealand education system, um, and uh, New Zealand trying to um, share its dairy expertise with Sri Lanka so that its dairy sector can be more productive uh, and more efficient. Um, these are goals that we still have and that we're still working on and that we still have have projects on. I think that just you know reflects the fact that we do have um, two societies that. Um, have challenges, but also uh, that New Zealand has expertise that is, of use, uh, that is of use to Sri Lanka and that we've been trying, well I guess it's now, given it started in 1950, it's now 70 years, we've been yeah. trying for 70 years um, uh, to, you know, extend, extend that um, assistance and a, and a spirit of friendship. Um, are there any plans of the New Zealand governments to fund any other projects in Sri Lanka? Yeah, I mean, we have, there are a number of projects that are still ongoing. I mean, I mentioned, um, I mentioned the vet training uh, one. Um, we, have a, we, we have another initiative called the Dairy um, Excellence Training Initiative, um, uh, which is more around, uh, more around um, farmers. Um, and uh, my expectation as we, um, as those projects, as the current projects come to an end is that we will, uh, find ways of uh, um, of of doing new things, probably in, in, in similar areas. But as as Sri Lanka changes and its dairy sector changes, probably the precise uh, thing that we the thing that we do uh, might change a bit. Um, and on the education side too, I think that um, uh, there are currently um, a good number of Sri Lankan students in New Zealand. There are a number who are studying in New Zealand who would like to get to New Zealand once the COVID yeah. allows the borders to open. Um, and there is a building up of cooperation between uh, New Zealand universities and Sri Lankan education institutes, uh, which um, are going to see, I am sure, uh, from hearing them talk, lead to more and more uh, cooperation, more exchanges, more opportunities. And I think that can only be a good thing for both countries that we are you know, sending our best and brightest to one another's um, universities um, uh, to benefit from, you know, that collaboration. Okay, I think um, that's it from me for today, but uh, would you like to share any final thoughts or any message to our Sri Lankan community who's reading the first, uh, <laughs> first ever Sri Lankan magazine in New Zealand, Sri Lankan's newspaper? Would you like to share any thoughts with our community in New Zealand? I'd like to say that it's been an absolute, it's an absolute privilege to be New Zealand's first High Commissioner here um, and it is such a warm and lovely and friendly place to be living for me and for my family. Um, every Sri Lankan I meet um, is warm and is kind and has positive things to say about, um, about New Zealand. And for me that is a reflection of uh, you know, the great work that, that um, Sri Lankan Kiwis have done uh, to really get this message through their networks that this is a country um, uh, that is one that Sri Lanka should be uh, should be friendly with and cooperating yeah. with, and so um, I have only I, fe I have any uh, positive feelings about this, um, 
and uh, and about you know the contribution that the Sri Lankan community in New Zealand is making um, is making to the relationship. I I just hope that we can over the coming coming year uh, see more travel again between New Zealand and Sri Lanka. Uh, once the COVID conditions yeah. allow, because uh, you know that's been a very consistent part of the relationship over a long time, uh, and it's been somewhat constrained. But uh, you know, um, 2022 should be uh, better than 2021 21. in that regard. Um, and I suppose the only other message I'd have is um, is that any Sri Lankan Kiwis who are coming to Sri Lanka who are interested in um, in visiting the High Commission and meeting me or my colleagues here. Um, they should just reach out because I'm always um, always open to that. That's very kind of you. So we heard from the first uh, High Commissioner from New Zealand to Sri Lanka and now we would like to also get to know his staff who's going to help him to make everything that he shared with us earlier possible and make them happen in Sri Lanka. Over to you sir. Thank you. Well we have a, team, a small team in the High Commission of about, I don't know, let's say seven people, but here are four of them, the four that uh, happen to be in the office right now. Uh, first here is Leonie Berryman, who is our um, admin manager. Mm -hmm. She keeps the whole operation running. And this is uh, Shamala, who is our uh, finance officer. And I don't know uh, how else to describe uh, what you do, except you keep the money coming in and, in, in and out. <laughs> and then we have uh, Dinu here, who is um, our uh, team administrator. And we have uh, Nadesha, who is in charge of uh, consular and uh, property affairs. So, whose titles did I get wrong? <laughs> I got it all right. I got it all right. Oh. Thank you everyone for watching us and being with us today. And you know, uh, Sri Lankans is the first a uh, Sri Lankan newspaper in New Zealand and it was a pleasure to have this conversation with the first New Zealand High Commissioner to Sri Lanka, His Excellency Michael Appleton. Have a good day everyone.